I'm going to show you how I made these butterflies using old book pages and acrylic paint in a really fun, messy, loosen up your painting kind of way, and you can use this technique on all sorts of things. So stick around while I make these butterflies before your eyes. Here's the materials we're going to use to make those butterflies today. I try to use things that either you have around the house or are really minimal on all the materials you use because that even makes it easier for me to do art classes in person and cuts down the costs and the stuff and all the all that stuff. So what I'm using for these, these little guys, I'm using a really old science textbook. I found this in a free book pile and it's gorgeous and I'm going to give it a second life. As you can see it's yellowed and aging so it's not really acid free but we're coating it in acrylic so if you care about longevity of art acrylic covers a multitude of sins. Wait, we also have four different colors of paint Granted, these are almost all the colors of paint right here. As you know from art theory, we can mix almost anything we want. A limited palette is actually very helpful for this, and hopefully I'll stick with some more limited things. I might grab another paint. I'm using a canvas panel for this. It's hard backed. You could use cardboard, a piece of like cereal box. I do recommend something harder than just cardstock because that will get really wobbly with all the moisture getting into that. We don't want that. Good old scissors. I'm using a ruler this time because we'll be measuring this up and we want all the butterflies to fit in the little squares we're making. Paintbrushes. It doesn't matter too much for this one at all. You'll probably want something that covers these little squares or you could even just cut out the squares on paper and glue them down after. That would make a really nice straight line. Brush that just can glop some paint on. It does help to have a detail brush so that you can touch up some of the butterflies if you want to, but I find white pens and markers and even white ink a lot more controllable than white paint on a brush. But these great pens, I get these from Michaels. I think Hobby Lobby has something like it. The Jelly Roll is one of the best white pens, but if you want to go over the butterflies again, these are some really, um, something darker would also go over the paint, so I've got Sharpies. I don't want to go straight black, and that's just an art design choice. You can do straight black, you can do whatever color Sharpie you want with these, and that's half the fun. Glue, which I might just use some acrylic gel if I were to do fine art that I'd sell. So if it's washable, that's good, but when you're working with acrylic, you may not want washable things because moisture will affect it more and make it sticky and all that. And this is one of my favorite things. It's a really big pencil lead. I just have it so I can big, see big lines. I use it for watercolor things so I don't scratch the paper as much. Two other little things before we get going. Spray bottle. Almost necessary for so much acrylic painting. It keeps your palette wet yield toothbrush, maybe. And one of my favorite texturing materials, bubble wrap. Oh yeah. And it's a way to reuse all this stinking plastic. Um, plastic wrap. Wadded up plastic wrap will make some really cool rocky textures back there. Play around. That is what this is for. And you can always cover it up because it's acrylic. All right, let's get started on our background. So that gives us so the first thing we're going to do is start preparing my background. And for that, I really want to do squares. I didn't do squares for some of my experiments. And I really want this with squares so I can use it with something else that are different sizes. Fortunately, this backing that I'm using is 9 by 12 inches, and that goes into squares of 3 inches very neatly. If you've got a different size thing going on, just start doing math. Start doing math. Now you don't need to see this whole process, so I'll probably speed this up and add some really cool music to it. So you'll just see me be doing this. So what I'm doing is mixing up some back colors for the background. These are also going to be the primary colors I'll use for the front of the butterflies, but I want these to be duller and lighter this time. There are so many different ways you could do this. You could go darker and have more contrast. You could use complementary colors behind the butterflies and really make them pop out. But I noticed that I have been loving doing analogous colors with just this mixed media work that I've been doing lately. This is a painting knife. 
You don't have to use one of these at all. I'm just going to stick it on here because there's paint on here I don't want to use up. Oh, I'm sorry, I do want to use up. I don't want to waste it. I mean, I waste so much paint, but when I don't have to, I'm not going to. I find myself using a lot of analogous colors that are, which means they're to neighbors on the color wheel. And I find that really pretty, especially when I want to do all sorts of things with this pattern that I'm making. And I'm going to use that orange on other places as well. This is kind of like a puzzle, actually. There's a word for it, like the four color map puzzle. You don't want to have this orange touching the orange next to it. You want to have them all over, and sometimes you just can't help what it's doing. But until then, we're going to kind of play with it. Oh, that's green. I don't want green. Light yellow is what I want. That's good. So this is going to be orange. Let's say we have an orange up here. Looks like these oranges might have to touch just the way this is. And that's okay. We're not going to die with that. So if that's orange and that's orange, there's a chunk of paper on there. I also reuse these canvas things from different classes. As you can see, it's been gestured over. So we have orange there, orange there. What if we had some light yellow right here, here, and here? I'm just using what's on my palette for this. So we've got two more colors we can do. I want a pink. We're going, that's kind of dark, so we'll go pink here, pink here, pink here. And that does leave a nice um, balance of this other fourth color we're going to stick on here, which might be close to white. I might do a really light purple, but I don't know if that's going to be too much for what I want to do right here. It might be another shade of orange, honestly, because it's pretty. And I don't, I'd really like a tight palette on this, a really tight, minimal color stuff. So maybe we do a different kind of orange, or is that too close? That's too close to that other orange. We can't do that. Color police will be after me. So I'm going to whip up a quick purple right there to really change it up. Might be a... We don't want a blue purple. It's because it's right next to that orange. Anything with a tinge of blue is going to look a lot bluer because they are opposites. So I'm going to make a really, really red purple and a light red purple. And of course you see me breaking all the rules over here on the palette. So purple, 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 light violet even. It doesn't really matter. It's going to be all mushed together. Violent swishing over on the water side of things. And you'll see this. You're going to see my paper get all sorts of messy. That's another thing with this project. It's going to get messy. You're going to use your fingers. I love that stuff. I'm always covered in paint. This is the non-toxic stuff. There, I do some of my fine artwork with the more toxic cadmiums. Well, I talk about how to be safe with those, and I tend to not finger paint when I do that, or try to watch myself not finger paint and be careful. I want this nice and light. I, I really don't want too much contrast in the background because of what I'm going to do later with this, or what I hope to do later. So I might have to go back and forth and make sure these are light enough in the background. I'm okay with it being a little streaky. If you're not, hey, blend away. Blend away and poke. You've got all day. You can pause me and blend away, and that is fine. Here's another bright orange. And even after you all do all this, you're going to see 10 different ways how you want yours to be done. So that's the nice thing about these repetitive art projects is that once you figure out the basics of what I'm doing, you can extrapolate from that and really have fun. I'm not sure what inspired me at first from doing this. I wanted to do butterflies with hearts because it's close to 4th, 4th of July. Oh goodness, not already. Valentine's Day. There's a four in the number. That's that's what, whatever. There's a four in the date, and apparently it's 4th of July already. Maybe you're watching this on the 4th of July. I don't know. Could be time travel. I don't know. Nice bright oranges. Like I was saying, whatever you want to do this for. But I had in mind making 
hearts with the butterflies. And with my experiments, I figured out that wasn't what I wanted to go for. It sticks out too much right now, but you can absolutely cut little hearts as butterflies. There's all that kind of stuff over the internet and it's adorable. But I decided not to. I just wanted butterflies and it was really fun. Which is why you're here. To see how much fun it is before you get yourself messy. Corners corners. Keeping that lined up will help digitally. You can poke that up. And this is the other purpley one we wanted to try to get over here carefully. Ah, uh, too purple! Too purple! Woo! Okay, went the other way. Why not? Why not? I can do this. I can mix colors. I'm a professional. And honestly, I think professionals go back and forth all the time. That is one reason there's some YouTubers I love watching because they don't just cut past all of the tri trial and error of some of this. It's a conversation with your paint. Once you put it down, you're like, oh, oh, that's horrible. Oh, no. It's a conversation back and forth of, well, that didn't work, or that was the wrong color tube. Whoops. That's going to happen. It's okay. So seeing that from other artists, it's it's nice because then you know, yes, we know what we're doing kind of, but half of that is in the troubleshooting. Or also we don't actually know what we're doing and we're playing and having fun and exploring. There are plenty of artists out there who will mix up all of their colors beforehand or amazingly know exactly what value to mix really fast, which is actually handy for plain air painting and you practice getting faster at that for plain air painting because you don't have that long, especially with acrylic. So you are able to speed up that skill. But in the meantime, here, let me show you. Oh, did you see what I saw? This is making a pattern right here. I'm not a giant fan of, that is a pattern. This is not mixed up enough for me. I'm not sure what I want to do about it just yet. I might make this orange and this red. We're going to do that because this is too symmetrical right here. You see they're swapped, but it's almost like an inverted swap right there and I do not like that. That's too, it looks too much on purpose and I don't want to do that. So we're going to make this one orange and this one pink. See, when it's every other, it's much easier to do that. And I'm going to try to make a straight line as possible. That's what these big flat ones are actually very handy for. Check my time. Make sure we're still recording, unlike the last time. All right. I think that will help. That will help randomize it a little bit. My goal at the end of this is to make a repeatable pattern, even if it's just out of these square. So I don't want it too regular. And honestly, I can take out each one of these squares or make squares individually and then put them together into a repeatable pattern. And you can put that on all sorts of things. There's wonderful dropshipping companies out there, like one I use, not sponsored, that I want to play with. Or even if I don't print it on anything, I want to play with this kind of pattern stuff. All right, so it's this one we're making red or pinkish. Red would be nice. It's light red. Technically, it's light red. And we probably will put some beautiful blue butterflies on top. We'll see. I do like that light blue that comes out with some of it. So we'll see what this looks like at the end. And I might just slap some light blue on there because I want to. And it's gorgeous colors. Doing one with almost all light blues and greens would be gorgeous. But there are so many variations for what you can do here. It's so hard to pick just one. I'm not really going to care about too many of those really sharp edges. All right, another pink. Two of these I might turn blue just because there's so much going on. Too much repetition going on. Yes, blue will add another color to the background, but I think we're going to be fine. And honestly, if you don't like the blue in the background, you don't have to do it. There's so many of these things. You don't have to do it this way. This is just documentation of what happens if you do. 
All right, now I'm trying to do all the background colors on this thing, and I am not liking how all these are going. They're almost like a baby girl quilt colors, and it's not what I had in mind for the butterflies. But also for art in general, sketching stuff out in your head is so, well, on paper, I mean, is so much easier to work with when you've got a color in mind. All right, back to the video. I don't want such a varied background, but I think it's this pink that's bothering me a little bit. So yeah, you're gonna see me poke. That pink is so princess pink, it bothers me. And I need to get rid of that. We're just going to go orange. I'm sorry, pink. You're a fine color the way you are, but not for this one. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. Now I feel like I regret everything, but let's see what it looks like once we put the texture on it. The texture, of course, comes from that bubble wrap. You don't need that much of it. I'm going to actually cut out a square. Popping out a square doesn't work. Trust me, I have tried. Eh. I like something manageable. A little bit bigger than the palm of my hand is fine, so you don't have to worry about too many edges, but this is about the size I normally work with. The colors are kind of almost atrocious right now. <laughs> like, what did I do? But also, I know with those butterflies on top, it's going to be different. And this next thing is also going to knock back some of the contrast and the stark shapes a little bit. So I'm taking that big flat brush again. It's kind of, in, kind of important for covering dis the volume of things and just covering all that distance. I'm doing mostly white on this. You can do other colors. White will kind of blend in and blues and stuff and you play with it. So as you can see, this is a pretty simple thing of, I'm not globbing lots of paint on my brush. It's not quite dry brush, but you don't see blobs of paint because you don't want to get into the cracks. And I'm holding this almost parallel. If you did straight up and down like this, it would get paint in the, in the ridges there. We don't really want that. We want on the top so you get polka dots. I press it on there, lift it up, and that acrylic paint doesn't like sticking to this plastic. It will eventually, and even dry that way. You can dry, like smash it on, dry it, and then peel it up. And this is just a really fun thing to do. That you can do with watercolor paper. It's just like a fun party going on right here. I'm going to add some blue into this because of what I have in my head is probably not going to come out with everything else and that's okay. I don't want it to look like a clown party. So you can do this all over again and again and again. I do recommend it drying in between some of these layers if you want to do it on top because it will pick up what's not dry yet. And you see me just charging ahead with this stuff. I'm not. And it's getting in between, but that's okay because it's not touching too much. It might even slide a little bit. Hey, it's texture. That was a good one. It's texture. It's okay. Another thing that's doing lots of these, not quite throwaways, but if you do this on paper and then cut it out to mount later and get on to the other fun part, you don't have to watch all this again and again and again. You can skip ahead or maybe I'll speed it up in editing. Who knows? Who knows what the future holds? <laughs> but I want to blend in some of these colors. So like right here. Yeah, that's going to be cool. Or not. I haven't actually done the finished part of this one yet. This is an experiment and I'm dragging you all kicking and screaming along with me. Thank you for coming on the ride. Either you will see a cool art project you can try yourself or you'll watch me fail spectacularly. And you know that epic fails on the internet are all the rage and are wonderful to watch. So, double cliffhanger. Something you wanna try or something I fail at, which don't ever try those, obviously. Yeah, just about right. That's very bright right there, but that's okay. I'm liking this. I'm liking this a lot. There's a lot going on. This gets set aside to dry. 
This little guy is currently washable, but when it's dry, it's not going to rehydrate. It's going to be bad for the sink. And over a garbage can at that point, because I don't know what's been, woo! <laughs> I don't know what textures we're gonna get out of this one now, but that was just too fun. All right, so I just ruined that bubble wrap onto butterflies. This is the part where I've decided to get my blues and get my both blues. I might play around with both of these. This is the phthalo blue, phthalo blue, however you pronounce that, ultramarine. You can't tell the difference well in these tubes right here, but I might add some of that. I'm thinking I want to do mostly blues and maybe some really nice deep green butterflies on this. I think that's gonna be really pretty to have them different shades of each other, but also similar for that overall pattern and it's gonna be gorgeous. I'm going to be showing you how I do a few of these and then probably speed up the rest of them. If you want to watch, you can pause, see how I do a different kind. But because this is repetitive, you can play around with this and get the hang of it yourself. Just like some of the things, we want these kind of watery and blobby. And it might take you a few tries to get the hang of just the right consistency for what we're doing. And also working almost fast enough to keep this wet is also important. This is the really fun and messy part. Blah, 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 blah. You're going to see little blobs of paint on here as you do this. And I'm going to add little bits of a different color or something contrasting in there as well. Something butterfly-like. I wouldn't go crazy and add two colors to this. Some butterflies might be. Keep my brush wet. It's blobby. Is it wet enough? I don't know. I'm gonna add some drops of water in there too and see if that helps. I am going that fast. I did not speed that part up. This is the part where you get the butterfly texture. I'm folding that in half, crease with my finger, and then either with the end of your brush, you can spread away. This is kind of the middle of the butterfly in a way. Just pick a spot, but you're going to press away from that section, like little rays of sunshine. My fingernails will do that too, but that's plenty enough. I'm gouging in there pretty good. It might tear, and you do another one. But that should give us some lines in our butterfly, like that. This is actually a bit of paint instead of paper. You'll see paper peel, especially in this older stuff. If that sticks when you're peeling it apart, then your stuff you used was too dry. And I love this texture coming through. That's gonna be awesome. So I'll show another one. Blah, 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 blah. Maybe some of this blue. So anything in the middle is going to be your, it's your mirror point. Oh, what's that term? I can't think of actual terms whenever I do videos. That's, that's your, dang it, reflection, reflection hinge. This is why people make things up when they do videos because you can't think of words. And so gorgeous blues. I'm gonna, can we get any green in there? Or do I add too much purple to do that? Let's find out. And drops of water. You don't, you wanna see a little bit of paint texture when you do this. And again, it's a lot of trial and error for how much is too much and you'll just get a smudge and when it's not enough it dries. So I'm gonna use my fingers to do this because they're dull. I'm not scratching. I'm kind of going parallel to the surface again, pretty hard. And it, when it's wet enough, whoo, like that, it's going to push that away where you're scratching or use the pencil. Oh, cool. So pretty, love all the colors. Who knows what I'll turn into. If I'm gonna get really picky, these lines right here might actually be too thick for that little butterfly we're doing because these butterflies are only gonna be about three inches square. So that scale is something to keep in mind if you want to, and if you don't, you know what? You can do details to it later. So that scratch made a teeny little line and you can play around with how that goes. So. I might do more than 12 of these so I can have things to pick from when it comes to papers or if they tear as it goes along. So this is the second editing montage where my hands are barely out of the camera because I tend to work close to the edge of the table towards my stomach for whatever reason. That's another reason good to wear an apron. But this is just another quick editing thing. I just said that already. 
of squishing down all these butterflies. It's kind of fun to watch really fast, and I want you to see that peel, the amazing appealing paint when I take those apart and to see the different ways I've been doing this and how messy you can get with this. It's just so stinking fun to scratch those designs in there and absolutely play with this. I noticed I didn't actually use my toothbrush for any of this yet. You can if you want. You can splatter it before or after you folded any of these and it's just really cool textures. You can do almost any texture you want and match the little things in there. And honestly, as long as you've got that line of reflection, it's going to look butterfly-ish. By now, I've made probably 16 or more of these things. You can go a lot more or always have a little extra to choose from. So I'm going to show you how I cut out probably two of these butterflies just to give you variation. But we've got a lot of work to do. I'm going to speed it up. So each one of these sheets should give you about one butterfly, maybe more, maybe less, depending on how you like the pattern. I'm going to actually fold it the opposite way so I can see the pattern on these butterflies right here. Now I'm sure you could go maybe look at some outlines of butterflies. I'm going to make this up. You might want to even draw on this if you wanted to with something else or you can do patterns. I'm going to start with the bottom of the butterfly. It helps to cut this in half and because I've been cutting out a lot of these, there's kind of a squiggly bit at the bottom of the butterfly. Again, this is not science butterfly right here. You can of course look up those amazing designs of butterflies if you wanted something a little more realistic. So there's this little guy right here. So that could be the bottom of a butterfly. Now, because I made very specific squares for these, I have to make sure it's going to fit. So with my ruler, I make sure that butterfly stays within that three inch mark at least. And we're gonna have to look at that when it's high as well, like how they're kind of square butterflies when we're done. So we'll have to cut a little bit of these away. So there's, that might be the bottom of a butterfly right there, the bottom bits. And I might get rid of that white, but we'll see. Here's the top bit and it's going to another reflection right here. So something going the other direction. I'm kind of trying to cut out hearts in a way. You could almost think of it as cutting out a heart. Some of the butterfly wings go out farther. You can follow along some of the smudge lines, which makes wonderful organic shapes. I'm going backwards compared to what I usually do right here. Fun smudge lines. You can go on the outside of the edges, but we're gonna have to make sure it all stays in that three inch mark. So we'll see, but that's really pretty. I think that was going to be way too big for what we've got, but you can see a little bit of where we're going with that. And that's really cool. So I find that the bottom bits of the butterflies here can be a lot smaller than the top. So that might even have to be cut down a little bit more trial and error. If you can think of a better idea for controlling the size of these butterflies as you go, let me know. Again, tracing the outline of it probably would help. You want, don't want that more than an inch and a half. And that's barely an inch and a half. You don't want to cover up that whole square. That's what you made that gorgeous square for. So I'm going to cut that down probably by quite a bit. And it's okay. We've got plenty of these to play with. Again, these things I can definitely troubleshoot. I don't want that. I want to tilt down so I can overlap troubleshoot if I were doing an in-person class and we could go over different methods and have everyone's input with it. So that's about three inches exactly right there. I would love it a little, a little smaller even, but we're going to keep this little guy because I really like how individual sheets make butterflies together. Sometimes I'll add a little bit of glue to keep it attached to its bottom as we go along and do some more. And you can, you can smudge these around a little bit before it sticks. So there's one purple one right there. Let's do a blue one. This one's just fun. You can kind of see that feathery, I don't know. I don't know the special science terms for all the butterflies. I think they're even feathers they're called. Butterflies are fascinating, the close-up textures of these little guys. So definitely check those out. Maybe this will make a great science art project if you're researching butterflies for kids or adults. Why not? And you can draw all that stuff on the inside. So I already know that that's going to be too wide, but I really want to catch that eye at the bottom right there because butterflies often have that. I do know they often have those false eyes to 
scare away predators like that. Yep, that's within three inches right there. We could probably even use this as the wings. This might work. We go around that cool edge right there and pick up a double. I don't think, I don't know if butterflies have that or if it's like dragonfly wings or something. That's going to be way too wide. I should know better. I'm wondering if we can even put a mark on these somewhere of, this is too far, go back now. This is the point of no return. Your butterfly has failed. That's not true. You can glue it back together. So that one's kind of cute. I kind of like that one. It's a little wide at the bottom, but we can go over that again. So there's that. I still have that top part, which I might be able to turn into another entire butterfly. Ah! All right, we're definitely speeding this process up because not only am I cutting out 16 butterflies, but those butterflies have two parts or more, especially on the papers that I really liked. Now, these little shapes that you've got, you can trace these out. You can print out butterfly shapes online and actually make some realistic ones. You could definitely, I highly recommend using that ruler to show you where the edge of your butterfly should be. I should have done that a little bit more. You might see me whip out Nope, nope, wrong, wrong section. I've got a T ruler that's really good for parallel lines. I just forgot I did not use that in this part, but a ruler to make sure those little butterflies fit. And then you're going to be seeing me mix and match the little butterfly butts and their wings. And sometimes you cut it out just right so the whole butterfly looks gorgeous on the thing you're doing. So this is just a lot of back and forth work. It's all very personal for what colors you want. And I thought mix and matching the butterfly butts and wings actually looked better than just having the little solid butterflies for this one. You might disagree. You might like your paint smooshes so much that you want that butterfly to look all the way it is. And if you're going to over it again with detailing with marker, that may not matter as much to you. There's so much you can do with this, which is another reason why I'd love to do this in person and see what everyone comes up with and help you make your ideas come to life because I don't know what you want to do to these. There's all sorts of things you can do. Outline in black, outline in white, and we are going to add little bug bodies at the end. It's really just a little splash of white down their bellies or black, depends on which kind you want to Surprise, surprise. This is where we come to another fun part of arranging our butterflies and making sure they all fit. Like that one already, it doesn't fit so good, but that's what we have scissors for. And we can put these little guys all over and then start arranging things. So I have way too many butterflies. And this is where we can play with all sorts of things. That guy's a little dark. This one's cool. Now, because of these squares we had beforehand, we've got some really cool background colors to play with. The blues are going to pop out against the oranges. And then something that's more orangey or yellow is going to pop out against the purples like that. So I've got so many butterflies that I can play with right now. I can make cards out of these. I've got so many options and it's really hard to choose which butterflies I'm actually going to use for what we're doing right here. And a lot of them, oh that's cute, two green? A lot of them might not make the cut because we just have so many that are adorable. Ooh, I like the shape of that one. That's a strong one. Now this is also where you're going to pay attention to balance of this whole thing of not putting too many darks. Like down here, this is a very dark row down here. So I need to balance this out by putting some darker ones on top and moving some around. Ooh, green on red is also really good. I like that little guy. He fits well. This is also a nice, really fun one. These little guys are kind of fun and will help mix up a little bit. So this is too much purple on purple, but that one kind of gets lost. So that's a really strong one to stick right there. Although we'll see if that stays much better. But I like this little guy. I might turn him into a card or her. I don't know. It into a card later if I don't like right there. This little one. Well, you might have noticed I cut some large ones that I will like to play with somewhere else, but not on here. And you might find a lot of scraps for those yourself. Some of these might just want to cut down. Now, I am going to leave room for little bitty antenna on top. So, a lot of these are not actually going to be centered, they're going to be a little bit farther down than what you might think. And some of these might have to be cut down as well. So here's another really dark one that needs to swap a place with something else. 
I like this purple, but it needs to go on a yellow to really stand out. And I like this little guy. If you squint, this one gets lost in that background right there, so he can't stay. So this is also like a puzzle. Again, that's a really big one, but he kind of works right there. Another darker one. Eh. And honestly, if you are really desperate for a certain color and you have a, like a puzzle piece you want to make, you can make that piece for yourself. And you know how to do that and whip one out and match a color if you want to really extrapolate, big word, with this process. Let's make one that fits that one spot. So I really like this little guy. I wonder if he's going to get lost on that orange when I cut him down. But that might have to happen. This one may not, however, but I still, I might cut them down a little bit because it's very similar to the one right here. And that's why we have all this. That's why we have so many of these little guys to pick from. And that's okay. Ah, too small. Oh no. I cut it off. There we go. I did glue these down to each other when I played with that puzzle piece process a little bit. Nice. All right, can I, can I get some of these away to play with it? I like this little guy, but he is bugging me. Bugging me. Get it? Heh. Heh heh. Heh. Okay. Yeah. This one didn't work out so well. I feel like there's too much business in the background of the pattern, so who knows? Maybe it'll get trashed. This one's big, too big. This looks like mermaid fins. This one's cute and might go on another another card sometimes, so I'm just trashing some of these. I glued this one off center, but that is a very easy fix. It also looks a bit more moth-like than butterfly, and again, easy fix. All of him needs to be cut down, I think. So I'll get to that probably later. I don't think I'm going to... Am I going to use this one? Oh, choices! 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 This one's got more color in the background of that one than the other one does. So that one might actually stay. Lots of contrast. Would that one be good right there? But even if some of this has a whole dark wing, I can go back and put more of that white back into it. So I'm trying to clear out the outside so you can see what this looks like without some of the other butterflies affecting what we're looking at here. Purple, orange, purpley bit. That one's little, but I kind of like it. It's so many choices to make, and that's what a lot of art is all about. Ooh, oh yeah. Make a choice you weren't expecting with that one. Swap that out. Nope, nope. And this is why I say no, because once I squint at this, it's got less contrast than this one right here, and this whole corner just kind of sucks away into nothingness, unless I can swap some of those. Nope, I still don't like it. This corner just blends away right there, and I don't like that. See, again, see how that one is just, the contrast on this one is just not right for that section right there. And that's because this is a set fairly decent dark green that we have to work with. It might be too dark for some of these. That's why we need those strong ones right there. And want something greener and stronger right here. I'm just swapping these little guys back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. This little guy's giving me a problem. He's got a really strong contrast inside of it, which is kind of the point of what we did. Yes, but no. So there. I like that one. This one's got some strong stuff. If I cut him down, though, are we going to lose some of that? And we're going to find out. So yeah, play around, see where you like these little guys. I'm doing, it's kind of an all over pattern. And then I do have an intention of seeing what it looks like just in the square as well. And already I can see that this little thing is not making the cut for what I want right there. So I might try something else. Oh, I like that one. So even look at the whole, look at even a, like a one square of what you've got with this. You can cover that up with a piece of paper if you want. Yeah, I swapped the... Nope, I've tried that before. I've tried it before. So it's a lot of back and forth, and it's kind of fun. 
So what we're going to do after this, once you have a final composition that you like and they're all tucked in, if you want to have them overlap, of course, you do you. But I'm going to get my final composition and glue it all down. On this next speed montage, I am mixing and matching more butterfly butts and bodies because I want this to even out a little bit. When I squint at this composition, I want it to be a bit of an all-over composition because of reasons. I actually want to use this design for more than just a card or something to stick on the wall. My intention, if I get around to it, again, all so many ideas, is to get repeatable patterns. So having something that doesn't stick out too much is going to help with that. So your painting is almost done. We've got one more thing I want to do to this. You can do like 10 more things if you want, but I really like to add little bug bodies to these. I'll often use white paint, but I've got a marker if I want to embellish more. The one thing I'm trying to do is just boost the contrast one more time, and also bug bodies, because they're adorable, and that kind of helps seal the whole butterfly thing. This is a really simple little process where I just give them a stripe, and Maybe I'll even do every other here and see how that figures out because bug bodies are usually darker. But I mean, we've got some incredibly accurate scientifical butterflies going on here. So really, who cares? But I do want to see what it looks like with dark. So here's a Sharpie. I'm just going on with a little bug body. It looks kind of cool with dark. And give it a little head if you want. It's buggy eyes. I mean, of course, you can see that antenna going around. So I'm kind of liking that being dark right there. And that's where we're experimenting with which way does it go. I do want to punch it darker. Or, I'm sorry, punch the contrast. But the question is, do we punch it up a notch with white? Or do we go down with black since the background is already so very white? So I'm going to experiment with a little bit of this stuff. This is the cheap craft acrylic because I don't keep that much black acrylic on me. Yep, cat's coming into the studio so you may have the studio assistant helping out here. So that's what it looks like with black. I kind of like that. And give it a little head. On this particular design I might actually just go for black. And it's super easy to either wipe these off or boop, boop, boop or paint on top of it once it's dry. So that's the nice thing about acrylic paint, especially black, because it's by definition, you know, you know, by definition opaque, hopefully. You can buy transparent blacks and do different things, but I think black's the way to go with this. Definitely. Don't be afraid of experimenting with acrylic. I don't want to really put heads on all of these for some reason. I really like that abstract, stylized, blah, blah, blah of just their little antenna. Alright, studio assistant may make an appearance. He's not technically allowed on my desk, but I mean he's a cat, so you can see how often that usually does anything. Alright, that'll do it. Yep, I'm liking the black better on this for now. Now one thing where this is coming into trouble are these guys, the really light ones that kind of blend into the background. I also want to do something about that in this final one because they blend into the background. And when I want to make a repeatable pattern out of this, like a square, it, it disappears. It disappears too much. Alright, even the Sharpie. Bye bye. Bug butt. Bug butt. Swishing. See how easy that was? Another thing you could do if you wanted to is go around and play with other butterfly designs. So I'm going to do that. Oh, I don't want to mess it up. But you know what? That's exactly what I'm asking you all to do is to experiment and play around with this a little bit. So I can dab with that. I can make different designs. And if you keep a lot of these designs simple, it's not going to overwhelm it. You can you can go crazy with doing this. You, If you're a professional artist or aspire to be or any of that, you can see how far you can get with this. You can see what you could do with this technique and just going around with the details and things like that, which is 
wonderful. If you're a beginner, you know what? You can play with this anyway. I mean, who cares? You can get a book of butterflies. You can play around. You are watching this embellishment in real time, just so you know. Ooh, I'm liking that. So the black worked really well for a little bug body. The studio assistant is around and he's making the table shake a little bit because he's a big boy. He's a big cat. If he stretches out on my legs, it's almost all of my legs that he stretches out. Ooh, I like this little thing right here. But I'm going to just tiny little details. I don't want to overwhelm the pattern we already made because it's gorgeous. And even some of those see-through bits right there. But, ah, that's too much like the one next to it. Ha! But you can see how just that little pop can help these little butterfly guys. And I'm just saying words at this point, but just gives you an idea of what you can do. And you could research butterflies. Thank you, internet. Odds are you found this on the internet. So there is wonderful information out there on the internet for how butterflies are supposed to look if you want to go more realistic. I'm just blabbering on now. A lot of this is sped up because it's so repetitive. And I think you guys and ladies understand that. For not the greatest real-time video to watch me do 16 butterflies, or in this case we ended up with 12. So some of the virtual classes, if I list them on YouTube like that, will be a little sped up because it's also, it's not cost effective for me to edit for that long right now. If this becomes high in demand and it helps me be all cost effective and all of that, then yeah, I can absolutely make more really long real-time videos. Um, I believe Paint With Me or Paint and Chill and all of that, those are great for, ooh, I don't like that, great for real time and I'll, I'll hopefully do some of that. Ooh, some sun's coming in. So doing that, or even a sketchbook tour, I'm just thinking of ideas right now. Have I ever mentioned that it's actually hard to talk and paint at the same time? And I believe that's one reason why so many people do a lot of voiceovers for while they're painting, instead of trying to talk through what you're doing. And it's it's got the same effect of like a wine and canvas, honestly, because if you think too hard about what you're doing, especially with this level of detail, with it's impressionistic. How, how much blending have you seen in my work? You can't think too hard, or it becomes really hard to do, honestly. Um, maybe I need to get better at doing some blending and all that kind of fun stuff, but in the meantime, eh, I like this the way it is. And that's actually why wine can actually help. I don't, I'm not condoning drinking. I am not. However, one of the favorite things about teaching painting to adults is learning how to play. Wine can loosen you up. It is true. And so can making messes like this. So this is the alcohol-free version of wine and canvas. Make messes. Have fun. Woohoo. Ta-da! I am liking this. I'm liking this a lot. This one, I don't want to do the same thing to all of these. That's the problem. But I do want the little bug body to come out a little bit on that one. Need a bug body. Ta-da! I am liking this right here, and I think that one is about done. That's all. That's all I touched up. Tiny little bits. You can go crazy with this and have fun with a whole bunch of pens and pencils and colored pencils might go well over this, especially if you use an acrylic matte medium. It gives a little tiny bit of a grit or even a clear gesso, which would probably make some of this foggy, but it would give it a grit to go with pencils on top of. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.